Grace and peace, everybody. This is Talia D. Thanks for stopping by my channel. I got some great questions for you ladies. This is for all my single sisters out there in the courting process, in the dating process. Go grab your notebooks because this these are good questions. Excellent questions to, to just bring before you while someone who could be a potential husband is um, expressing interest in you. These are my top four questions to have before you while you are being courted, while you are in the dating process, okay? To keep in front of you, to kind of keep as a guide for you. So these are not in any type of chronological order of importance, um, but these are just the top four I think will be more beneficial um, during this process. Like and subscribe. Shalom. Number one. Does he value and respect your boundaries? If that man is the one for you, he will respect them too. And he will also have boundaries about himself as well. Okay. You shouldn't feel pressured into doing anything you don't want to do. As soon as you start feeling pressured towards something and you feel like these boundaries are becoming uh, pushed in a direction where you don't feel comfortable, that's a red flag. That's a red flag that should not be ignored and that should be brought up in the conversations you guys are having with each other. Okay, the Torah is all about establishing boundaries from, you know, where you live, where you work, even within our families and relationships in general, the Torah is all about establishing boundaries and that's okay. That's okay to have boundaries and you need to value and stick with them. Number two, ask yourself, is this man speaking life into my vision? Yes in your vision and your calling because if he's walking in his calling and walking in his purpose and then he sees you walking in yours is he going to speak life into yours so when you guys come together you are increasing together becoming one flesh together creating fruit together so is he speaking life into a potential partnership or is he trying to create a deficit? Is he trying to create division? So that's also, if that's the case, that's also a red flag. You don't never, you don't ever want to ignore what father might be pressing on your spirit during these processes. I know our emotions can kind of get all fluttered and that's okay. That's how he designed us but also use wisdom. So these are just things to keep in front of you. So number three, sis, am I chasing this man? Oops. Ask yourself, am I the one chasing him? Or is he the one pursuing me? <laughs> Since there is no need to chase, hallelujah, that burden is off of you. We were not designed to be the chasers. That's a man characteristic. He is the hunter, not you. If you find yourself chasing after this man, begging him to do stuff, that's a red flag. That's a red flag. Now remember, remember, always go back to scripture. Father will never set us up to fail. And 1 Samuel 25, Ooh. hold up. Yeah, 1 Samuel 25. Remember, David went to go get Abigail. He went to go get her. In Genesis, Abraham went, excuse me, Abraham sent his servant to go find his son a wife. His servant found Rebecca because she was doing what father already had her designed to do okay if you are walking in your calling walking in your purpose father already made 
away. He already has designed your life. All you need to do is be obedient. Okay. He does not want us to fail. He does not want us to be alone, but he also doesn't want your hands all up in his plans either. (laughs) And I, I'm guilty of that. I, I, I have been guilty of that. So I want to make sure that I, I spread that knowledge for you. And, you know, I share that knowledge with you um, and pass it down because I don't want you making that mistake either. So just do what you are designed to do and Father will take the lead. Have faith that he already knows what you want. He's already looked at that list that you wrote down. You know, he already knows what you desire. So if that lines up with his will, it'll happen. It'll happen. Um, So again, number three, there's no need to chase. Okay. Number four. Does he sound like the most high? And is he actually walking in the character of Yeshua? I say that because not only is he is he talking the language of the Torah? Does he have Father's word on his heart? But then here comes Yeshua, actually the walking word, the walking Torah, the Torah that was put into action. Is he putting his words into action, sis? Is he telling you all what he's going to do, trying to do, finna do? And then is he is he doing it? You know, you really want to take heed of that. Take note of that. Um, because scripture says, out of the mouth, the heart speaks. Really listen to how this man is talking to you. Okay? Really be in tune with your conversations in your midrashes. Be present in what's going on, you know. Don't look at how cute he is and how fine he might be and how good he smells. Yep, yeah, yep, all that's all that's carnal, all that's just a distraction. Don't be distracted. <laughs> but really listen to his language, you know. Um, watch his character, his integrity about himself. You know, our father is a man Um, that displays character of righteousness? Is he a man of righteousness, putting things in order, you know, establishing those boundaries I mentioned back at number one, you know, really take heed to what's going on as you guys are are talking to each other. Communication, communicate, please. So that was number four. Does he sound like the most high? And is he walking in the character of our Messiah, the one that displayed the true meaning of love, the true application of what this word looks like and sounds like that we read almost every day? So those are four questions. Again, I'm going to go over one more time. Number one, does he value and respect your boundaries? Number two, ask yourself, if he's, is he speaking life? into your vision and in your calling. Number three is, are you chasing him? There's no need to chase, okay? And number four is, he does he sound like the most high and is he walking in the character of our Messiah? Father, I thank you for planting these seeds in my sisters so they can have, so they can have a, a productive, fruitful harvest come next year with the one that they desire to walk in righteousness with you, Father, to walk in union and in partnership with a man that has a heart for you. I love you, sis. I love you, my sisters. Until next time, shalom. Like and subscribe, shalom.